Sorry, folks, come through. Luke, Sam, step up. Regarding what the Republic of Texas was, in 1836, a number of people who had moved here from North America, at the invitation of the Mexican government to settle here, they were being chased out by a new president of Mexico who was also general of the armies there. And they had to defend themselves against Santa Ana and his armies. That lasted for about a year, but finally, uh, General Sam Houston, leading these volunteers, defeated Santa Ana at a place called San Jacinto, and in defeating the president and general of Mexico, they were able to force him to sign a treaty. The treaty formed a new nation, it said that he would never again come across the Rio Grande River to bother the people in Texas anymore. The treaty also said that the land of Texas belonged to the people who lived on the land of Texas forever. And that's a treaty that is perpetual. It doesn't go away. So what is the Republic of Texas now? It is the land of Texas. The land of Texas does not belong to the US. It doesn't belong to the federal government. It belongs to the people who live here. And there is no federal land. If they want land in Texas, they have to lease it from us for their military bases and so on. OK, going hot. <laughs> <laughs> what the Republic of Texas is today, in the early 2000s, a number of people got together and said, you know what, if the land is still ours, and if there's a perpetual treaty that says we are a nation, let's just be a nation. And so they elected, but with a vote from the people, uh, a president, vice president, secretary of state, a congress, a supreme court, justice, and all of those are still occupied and manned to this day. In fact, that government meets every month on the second Saturday of the month, and the people of Texas who are interested come to those meetings. That's what it is today. The purpose, the goal of the Republic of Texas and what we're doing is to restore and to preserve all the freedoms and all the sovereign rights that were won in 1836 at the Battle of San Jacinto when that treaty was signed. In other words, we're here to make sure that the people get to exercise those rights even though an overreaching federal government of the U.S. keeps trying to take away more and more of the rights and freedoms. We're here to restore them and to make sure they're preserved. Motion. Do I have a second? I'll have Wayne Williams, Missouri County, I have a second. I drove here from uh, Lake Jackson, Texas. It's uh, about 240 miles. Uh, I had to wake up early, uh, but I wanted to come. I went last month to this meeting. And what I see are some people that are uh, concerned about where our country's heading, and uh, and they they look for the alternative. Uh, uh, where there's a lot of talk about secession in this country because we see tyranny in Washington. We see even our own uh, elected uh, representatives wind up uh, getting elected because uh, they're people with wealth that are paying for their elections. Patterson. I just talking to. <laughs> no, Marianne's in the I bathroom. told her I was going to leave this for Mr. Patterson. Okay. 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 
He's not here. He's not here on Friday afternoon, right? <laughs> She asked me, she said, if, if you was him, would you be here on Friday afternoon? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I left the act passed by Congress to reclaim all the land of Texas and get it on record. We, then we reclaiming all the land for the people. This is a map of the original boundaries from 1836 of the nation called the Republic of Texas. Here's a map of the state of Texas today. And all of the mountains, all the way up to here, which is Wyoming, Colorado, New Mexico, Kansas, and Oklahoma, that were part of the nation then have been stripped away because this is the northern limit of Texas, which is somewhere in here. I think I'm going to make a stop here before we leave the building. I've served these papers to all the different governors, to the Washington, D.C., to the Bureau of Land Management. So what I'm doing is I'm leaving him a copy because I didn't serve him a copy. I just served all the top people. Do you, you have any uh, uh, any uh, 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 money, real money? Yeah. With you? Yeah. Sure. Hold your hands off. Uh, I, I might want to buy some real money. Okay. So this is... Uh, That's copper, pure copper. This is copper? That has a face value of two, you'll see on the other side. Okay. 99.9% .9 pure silver. That one's in a airtight, so it won't tarnish. Yeah. How much is this worth? What, 35? Oh, that, that one goes for about $35. Okay. Can I get a couple of these things from you? Sure. I help design these. I draw them first and then have an artist. Oh, uh, okay, cool. Um, <clears throat> why don't you just uh, give me 40 and the eggs and the chicken on that? Okay. okay. Great. Well, I'll be glad then to do we're, that. Then we're bartering. That's fine. I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> Over here, we've got a machine that's running Republic of Texas currency. Right now, we've got it set up for a one ounce. 39 millimeter silver medallion in a fruit finish. And so you can see the Republic of Texas star on one side with an outline of the original uh, Texas surf, uh, map. And on the other side, one nation under one god with a uh, great sculpt of the Alamo there. Uh, we started do doing these all the way back in 2009. We've made hundreds of thousands of pieces of this so far. These presses were used by the U.S. Mint in Denver for almost 50 years to make pennies. And now what we're going to do here at the Mulligan Mint is repurpose them to make fractional silver and a complementary currency system that we can use to change the world. Well, we believe very strongly here that money is the root of all good. And so if we can put the control and issuance of money back in the hands of the people where it belongs, that anything is possible. We can level the playing field. We can make a marketplace that once again is fair and open to anybody that wants to get in, anybody that wants to be creative, make something, create value. And money is the way we keep track of who owes who what, how we exchange value in the marketplace. And if the money's not fair, if the money's not honest, then it makes it impossible to have fair exchanges in that marketplace. And so what we're going to do here is we're creating that complementary currency system that can fill in the blanks where the U.S. dollar lets us down and we can reestablish honest marketplaces where people can barter and trade once again. Here's my suggestion. <laughs> it says, give me a suggestion, so there's my suggestion. There's our suggestion. <laughs> We're the only one that has land office out of all 50 states. If the 49 other states 
All of their land records are not in their state. The land records for all 49 states are up in Virginia, very close to the District of Columbia. It's called Bureau of Land Management. <clears throat> it's the United States Bureau of Land Management. The United States owns, has con full control of all that other, okay, all the other states. states yeah, on their records. These records stayed in Texas because we're still independent. Then the U.S. Senate ratified a treaty with Texas for friendship, commerce, and navigation in 1843, but refused to ratify a treaty of annexation a year later in 1844. That December outgoing President John Tyler proposed that Texas be annexed by a joint resolution of the U.S. Congress. That passed in February of 45, and November, Texas voters approved annexation. In 1861, the people discovered the United States wasn't going to do what they said they was going to do. So they elected, uh, formed another, a new constitution and took another vote whether to secede or not. The United States declared the, the vote and the constitution null and void. But the, what the people didn't understand is Texas never ceded its lands, and they were and they were taking a vote to secede, and you cannot secede from something you never ceded. Jane, Jane's a mighty hunter. Uh, anybody after her chickens? Yeah. Man, they're dead. They're dead. Uh, you don't you don't go after Jane's chickens. Grenades right on where I needed to drop them at. Okay. Oh, dead on. Do the, do the next one. Do the next one. That's Got to fire off one. another one. Do, do, do both of them. Do, do all three of them. Just bam, bam, bam. All three of them. There's another one. Perfect. Perfect. Okay, y'all happy now? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> The kind of governments we have now are like a parasite. A parasite is a living thing, but it lives off of the lives of others. There are parasites on cows, there are parasites on trees. Government has become a parasite, and there are as many people dependent on the government in the United States as there are that are not dependent on the government. So it's a kind of a 50-50 deal. Well, we can't support that other half by our labor because government doesn't produce anything of value. It only takes what's of value and gives it to people who work for the government or who are dependent on it. In the Republic of Texas, that can't happen. The Constitution of the Republic says the government is very small, does very few things, is forbidden to do the other things. And so people keep the fruits of their labor, they keep the work of their hands, and then they can start businesses, they can hire more people, the other people have jobs, everything works fine without the parasite. I think right now, the way things are going, the Republic of Texas would be a whole lot better off than the state of Texas. Texas has got its own electrical grid. It's got all the oil and gas and everything it needs. It's got all the industry and everything it needs. It can survive by itself without the rest of the United States, which is to say the rest of the United States cannot survive without Texas from my understanding. Most people around this country or around the whole world are thinking oil wells when they hear about Texas. Well, that was true a long time ago. But now, 2013, there is more energy coming out of the ground from natural gas than there is from liquid petroleum. And there's enough natural gas 
discovered already to fuel Texas for the next hundred years or longer. This plant behind us is one of the plants that's capable of burning gas. Yeah, because there is so much gas and oil and coal and wind and solar available in Texas, meaning we have a lot more sunny days, uh, Texas is a standalone area as far as energy resources. It does not need to import energy from other states or from the federal government. It can export energy, and so the, the resources are here, and the cost of energy per BTU or per whatever you measure it is usually almost always lower in Texas than it is in the rest of the, uh, the states, which is very good for us. But that's because with the independent Texas power grid, Texas does not have to let the U.S. regulate the costs, the price of energy. The people who work at the Mint are not employees, they're partners. And they've agreed that when they get paid for their work, that they will be paid in silver that is produced at the Mint. And it makes sense because they're producing real money and they want to be paid in real money. <laughs> Everything is barter. They're exchanging their labor, hours of their life, for a commodity, and that commodity is silver. It's like paying people in eggs or bacon. <laughs> Since they're being paid in a commodity, according to the U.S. government and the IRS, this is not money, this is a commodity. So since they're not being paid in U.S. dollars, and they aren't, then U.S. dollars are what's taxed. That's the simplest way to put it. <laughs> There's no income tax if you're paid in eggs or if you're paid in uh, loaves of bread. <laughs> you know, that's a, just an exchange, a commodity for the use of my time and my skills. Uh, Sir Evelyn de Rothschild, and uh, he is sitting there overlooking all of his sheep, hanging out in front of FEMA camps and the IRS and the Federal Reserve and the Bilderbergs and the CFRs. Uh, we are the nanny state now where we are being watched almost everywhere we go by security cameras and satellites and drones flying over us. Uh, we've got our military now to, to extend democracy out there into the rest of the world and as long as we're asleep and we're just watching TV everything's going to be just fine. Every once in a while they lose one of us and they don't really like to lose us but uh, it's all collateral damage. The people here believe very strongly in peace. We're pacifists, we are anti-war. Um, we believe at the same time, though, that uh, very strong defense and being able to protect your life, your liberty, and your property is also very important. So as we walk through here, you may see guns scattered across the building. There's a AR-15 back here in this corner. It belongs to our marketing director, Trey. Um, and so you'll see a lot of people carrying and uh, and doing things that most normal businesses wouldn't normally do. It has the Second Amendment actually on the back of the coin, completely spelled out. It's one of our one of our more popular medallions. I think this poster here really sums up who we are better than anything else in this building. Ron Paul is is certainly one of our personal heroes and probably the. Uh, by far the most legitimate person that's ever served in, in government. Um, he wrote a book called End the Fed, and it's a great book, but we took a little bit of a different pr approach and said, why don't we just uh, stop the revolution and start the evolution and ignore the Fed? <clears throat> instead of trying to compete against them, instead of trying to put them out of business or wave a, a sign and get them to change what they're doing, let's just ignore them, pretend as if they don't exist, and we'll watch the effect that they have over our lives and our finances disappear almost to nothing. So we like to ignore the Fed around here. You know, people often ask, what would it take for us to have the authority 
to govern the land area and the people of Texas. And there are several possibilities or probabilities that would bring that about. One is a complete economic collapse when the monetary system of the United States stops working. And it's inevitable that it will. And then you have anarchy, then you have chaos, then you have disorder. And the thing that's needed is to have a government in place that works on a volunteer basis instead of having to be paid huge salaries as the people in Austin, Texas are. Yeah, push you on that. <laughs> that's why you see him up there hanging. Where are you going to start at? Here. The news articles are starting to uh, reveal what we've known for a long time here, and that is that uh, there are more jobs in Texas than just about any place else. Uh, and in fact, uh, Governor Perry yeah. has said uh, Texas is open for business, which is another way of saying we have jobs here, and we do. And the question is, why does Texas have plenty of jobs when there are whole states that uh, just can't create jobs and have so many people, more people going on unemployment than ever? And there are several reasons for that. One is a lot more Texas people are personally entrepreneurs. They think in terms of how can I organize people together to provide a product or provide a service which uh, people want. In other words, not to get them to want something, but if they already want something, how can I provide it to them? But you know the biggest part of it is? There's just a whole lot less government interference, over-regulation. Uh, you have to get a permit. You have to wait six months or a year before you do something while they go and think about whether it's good for the people or not. If it isn't good for the people, the people won't buy the darn thing. That's it, you know. The United States flag and the Texas flag flies at the same height. We're the only state, and we're the republic, that can do that. The other flags have to fly below. And whatever is on top of that, the finial that's on top of that flag, sets precedence. If it's a ball, it's a military flag. If it's an eagle, it's a presidential flag. And one of these days, I'm going to slip up there and put a McDonald's hamburger on top of that American flag. OK, let's go to the Capitol. <laughs> statue up yonder. It's two feet higher than Washington, D.C. statue. <laughs> Everything in Texas is bigger. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Always. We got, got our own land, we got our own flags, we got our own money, <laughs> and we got a Capitol building higher than Washington, D.C. That ain't bad. <laughs> When Texas was fighting, that is, defending itself against the armies of Santa Ana from Mexico, they chose the gold star as their emblem and says Republic of Texas. And that seal was adopted in 1837 and is still in the Capitol building today, right here in the very center of the building which is just another evidence that the Republic of Texas has not gone away. There's just a different form of government governing it. But the land, the people, and the culture, and the spirit of Texas are still the same today. Hi, Mom, hi, Dad. As an elected senator in the Texas Republic, I've had to give thought to whether I even wanted to run for that office. 
And during all of that, I decided that it was worth doing for several reasons. I have children and grandchildren, and I guess pretty soon I'll have great-grandchildren. And I want them to grow up and live in a place that's truly free, and that requires a nation that's independent, where the government is limited. It's limited in the amount of money it can spend, or borrow, or print, <laughs> or coin, or whatever. So I saw a chance for me to play a part of having a clear vision, putting it in words, putting it on paper, and creating the base, the foundation, on which a free nation could live again, a free, independent Texas.